historically, we had first the Great British Leap, then we had the Victorian boom after railway panic, we had the Belle Epoque in Europe, the Progressive Era in the USA after the crisis of the 90s and 95, we had the post-war golden age after, of course, after the Great Depression and the war, and we have ahead the possibility of a sustainable global knowledge society golden age. The question mark is there because it's not automatic, because it's got to happen. Golden ages follow the big financial collapses, but they must be facilitated by enabling regulation and policies for shaping and widening markets. Because what needs to happen for deployment to really take off is for markets to be there for that enormous potential that was installed in the previous period. So we're not facing an accidental financial crisis, but a recurrent structural shift. Now we're going to a different situation where the context is the new engines of growth are ready. All the telecom and electronics and all the Google world, it's all set up. The new infrastructure widens and deepens market access. You can think of selling in India, it's nothing, whereas 30 years ago it was very difficult to think about it. The new paradigm has been learned and a huge potential for growth has been installed. So what is the source of dynamism? Demand, expansion of demand, public and private by whatever means and reshaping of its profile through direct or indirect income distribution to enable production growth and constant innovation. So we're really shifting from times of experiment and turbulence to times of build out and harmonious growth. With such different periods, we have different roles for the agents. In installation, it is finance and the new entrepreneurs that do all the innovating. They're the drivers, they're the ones who do the innovating. They're the ones who move the economy. And the state is in a facilitating service role. In deployment, it's production and the state that have to be drivers and innovators. And finance goes into a facilitating and service role. I know it's not going to be easy, but it's got to be done. And if it's not done, we will continue bump in the bumpy ride. Each revolution redirects the technological potential. The techno-economic paradigm shift from the 1970s uh, went from the logic of cheap energy, oil, for transport, electricity, synthetic materials, etc., to the logic of cheap information, its processing, transmission, and productive use. We went preference for tangible products and disposability to unthinking use of energy and materials. Now, we have the possibility preference for services and intangible value, and a huge potential for savings in energy and materials. So we're going from unavoidable environmental destruction to a capacity, at least, for environmental friendliness. That will bring optimal relocation and geographic re-specialization of physical production, increasing shift from tangible to intangible production, and a gradual redesign of the consumption patterns for the good life. So the triple route to the golden age, what do I think is? ICT, green meaning the environment, and full globalization. Those are the three means of creating demand. ICT, the internet access, is the social and geographic frontier of the global market. Anybody who doesn't have internet is not in the market. ICT, uh, ICTs are the main enabling instruments of sustainability and only with sustainable production and consumption patterns is globalization possible. But we need policy consensus involving government, business and society. We can no longer have top-down government decisions and business reacting, it's got to be done together. How was the previous golden age unleashed? Well, by shaping the profile of demand and widening market reach and infrastructures. Reconstruction of Europe, aided by the Marshall Plan. That was huge demand. Income redistribution through the welfare state so that the workers became middle class consumers. Again, huge demand. 
Universal reach of new infrastructures, electricity, roads, telephones, etc. Urban, suburban, and rural suburbia became the most important source of demand. The state as employer and as major buyer, infrastructure, military, education, health. Subsidies to agriculture, which made an increasing standard of living and investment capacity in the, in the countryside. Ample credit for housing. Fannie Mae was created then in the US and for installment buying of cars and appliances, plus unemployment insurance if people got, you know, you could still be paying your installments. And then the funding of infrastructure projects in the developing countries by the World Bank and other agencies. So all that created huge markets. It was a positive sum game that brought the greatest boom in history. The new global positive sum game with ICT green and full globalization, revamping production and transport systems to make them sustainable is equivalent to post-war reconstruction. Incorporating many millions into sustainable cons consumption patterns, so they have to be sustainable, is equivalent to the welfare state in terms of demand creation. And full internet access at low cost is equivalent to electrification and suburbanization in facilitating demand and education. So globalization is at the turning point. We have a wide range of the possible. We can have a golden age or we can have a gilded age. Uh, not really good. The Gilded Age would be shining prosperity on the surface and continued polarization and marginalization underneath. Golden Age is increasing prosperity for all with a global positive sum game. 